victory party when something's been won they're standing right next to the players going hey we showed them didn't we and there's a player you're looking at and going no your kit's not dirty uh, I was cheering you on from row Z I was someone had to put the kettle on it's like oh you didn't get really stuck in did you but you wanted to be there with the players they wanted to be on the team the funny thing about the spectators is whenever you announce something, I don't know what you do in your organisation in the way of rewards, but you might at the beginning of the year spend some time saying, listen, this is what we're going to do this year and these are the rewards and the people who achieve this are going to get that. Maybe it's a bonus, maybe it's a holiday, I don't know what it might be, it depends on your business. The spectators look at the players and go, you're going to enjoy that. There's an assumption there, isn't there? There's an assumption, I might be on the team, but I'm not actually going to be the one scoring the goals. Thank goodness we've got the players doing that. But I'm on their team. They watch it happening. What would it have been like if Churchill had been a spectator, eh? Imagine that. We will fight them on the beaches. That's, I think my Churchill impression. No? Okay. <laughs> we shall never surrender. Although I'm happy to go with the flow, it depends on what everyone else thinks. It just wouldn't have worked, would it, if Churchill had been a spectator, okay? So let's talk about these on this lower quadrant over here. Low self-belief and low commitment. We call these the corpses. <laughs> the walking dead. The emotional vampires. The ones you see coming down the corridor and you think, quick hide. <laughs> Morning, how are you? Not so bad. Can't complain. Yeah? Or the one I heard a little while ago, somebody said to me, I said, how are you? And as well as they'll let me be. <laughs> Whoa, Remanek. These people retired years ago and you're still paying them. Yeah? They are still drawing a salary. They know how to play the game. Yeah? If those people make it happen and those people watch it happening, these people have no idea what's happening. <laughs> no idea at all. Uh, I was doing a session a little while ago uh, with a group uh, and normally, I mean, as much as this is a bit of fun and I can do it with you guys, because we're all in the people business and we kind of know this. but. And we're, and we're not talking about us, are we, at the moment? We're talking about them, which is much more comfortable. If ever you go to the doctors and it's not about you, it's much more comfortable, isn't it? This is talking about them. When I do this with, with a team of people and I'm talking about them, I tend to do this on day two after we've made friends. <laughs> <laughs> I never go straight in and do this. I have to do the look in them in the eye and go, are we friends? Can we talk? Can we? <laughs> Let's have a comment. Anybody seen Jerry Maguire, that brilliant bit where he says to that guy, are we friends? Because you're really cheesing me off. And the guy goes, Ooh! he says, because friends can talk. So you only do this when you make friends with people properly. But when we, I, I, one guy kind of said, oh, he said, my dad's a corpse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> Tell me more. All the usual, you've done it when you've been doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone. When your brain goes into overload, what do you say now? <laughs> Don't let the face know what the brain is thinking. Try and look ca casual. Well, I've not got one of those faces. My face goes into panic and they go, you're panicking now, aren't you? Go, does he show? <laughs> does it? Does he show? It's kind of my dad, my dad's called. So I kind of, I thought I'd opt for silence. Now, I don't do that very often, to be honest, as, uh, as my husband would tell you. Uh, but <laughs> I opted for silence. I thought, in a minute, they'll fill it in. They'll, they'll fill in. And they went, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he works for... Uh, now, I can actually say the name of the organisation now. I couldn't for a long time if I told this story. He said, he works for Rail Track. I said, really? I said, well, you know, he said he's a maintenance guy. And I, of course, jumped to conclusions, thought, oh, he's misunderstood me. He thinks I'm talking about rank and pay. And I went, no, 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 no. This isn't about pay. He said, no, 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 wait till you hear the whole story. I went, all right, then. He said, yes, he's a maintenance guy. He uh, maintains a, a, about three miles of, uh, of track just outside Runcorn. I said, OK, waiting for the bit. He said, uh, and every day he goes out with his kind of toolbox and his butty box and off he goes to maintain the track. And I'm thinking, he doesn't sound like a corpse to me. He's turning up for work. But then, of course, as we said, corpses do, don't they? Usually on the dot at both moments, you know. 
but he goes up and down the line and he taps the line and he maintains the line. I said, I'm sorry, I, I must have missed something. What's the problem? He said, oh, they closed that line five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your dad's a corpse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Easy life, you know, flip it heck. They're not going to tell anyone. Don't tell anyone they've closed it. Don't tell them I'm still doing it over here because nobody can complain about me because I'm still doing it. But never, it's, the common se it's that common sense, you go, did you not think to say to anybody that still doing that bit of paperwork was pointless now we've actually stopped doing that particular thing? No. Oh wait, nobody told me. It's not my fault. The corpse is, you, I can see you're all going, yeah, that's so and so and so. -and -so. <laughs> like I said, don't label people, but you can't help it, can you? The corpse is, drive your bananas. What about these? The terrorists. High levels of self-belief, but no commitment. Their self-belief is great. They talk with the most amazing conviction about stuff they know nothing about. And they can be really convincing. There's times when you can listen to me go, really? Is that the, really, you really think there's that conspiracy, do you? You actually think that the boss has decided that this is all about this. I actually spoke to a load of people who believed, quite honestly, that in their organisation, it was an organisation that got ranked, actually ranked, as opposed to just levels, they, they you know, had stripes on their shoulder. You actually think that when you get beyond that level, you have your brains hoovered out. And I thought they were joking. I mean, I thought it was, it was surely it's a joke. And they were, yeah, because they were all right when they were that rank and they've changed and the terrorists will, be, and you go, really, is that true? I, I, I almost want to go and find the HR policy that says, right, uh, this is the course for the people who go into that level and this is the hospital appointment <laughs> to have their brains, have the lobotomy done, you know, what's this? Is they're all for themselves. Wow, the terrorists can be really convincing. We call them the terrorists and we have to be a little bit careful. You know, just after 9-11, we still used to use this word in. And of course, people get a bit touchy, you know, oh, it's not politically correct to call them that, is it? It's not politically correct to say, hang on a minute, you tell me what terrorists do. What you call real terrorists? Well, they destroy stuff. Well, guess what? That's what these people do. Yeah? And it may not be that they do it physically, but they certainly do it mentally because they stop it happening. They're the blockers that we have in organisations. Yeah? They're the blockers. They stop it happening. They put 70... This is the, the challenging thing for us. They put 70% effort into doing just enough. Yeah? They really know how to play the game, don't they? They really know. And the other 30%, what do they do with that? Here's a question for you. It's not a rhetorical question. What do they do with the other 30% of their time? And... and hmm? Moan. They moan. Who to? Everybody. Everybody. And why? Because they enjoy it. Because it makes them feel important. There's another reason, and this is much more proactive than reactive. They're not engaged. They're actively disengaged. We've got disengaged and we've got actively disengaged there. Remember this. Terrorists are always on a recruitment drive. Aren't they? Always on a recruitment drive. You get someone new into the organisation. Who's on the welcoming committee? <laughs> Let me tell you what it's like around here, son. <laughs> yeah? I was doing a session a little while ago, and there was a, a group of people, and there was a lady at the front, and uh, their biggest moan was, it's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. And there was a woman at the front, she kept saying, it, oh, it's not like it used to be. It's not like it used to be. And she looked quite young. And so at break, I sort of sidled up to her. I was making polite conversation. I didn't want to go straight in because I thought I might be a bit aggressive. So I sidled up to her and said, so uh, how long have you been with the organisation? She said, three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in those three weeks, because I say, well, well, when you join the organisation, do you have lots of hopes and ambitions? She said, oh, yes. I said, what changed? And she couldn't tell me. Nothing had changed, really. The organisation had been the same for three weeks, but she could tell you about all the changes that happened from 10 years ago and from 15 years ago, from the time, the good old days. Where had she found that out from? The terrorists. Let me tell you what it's like around here. It's not like it used to be. Really? Yeah, it's not like it used to be. Wow. The terrorists are always on a recruitment drive. And why do people listen to them? Why? Because actually those people have loads of skill, 
loads of potential, loads of qualifications, and of course a higher degree, as we've already said, of self-belief. They're always on a recruitment drive. So here's a question. Who do you deal with first? Who do you deal with first? Because you've got a few of them there. There's only one box we're really happy with. Who do you deal with first? Terrorists. The terrorists. The terrorists. Why? They sour the, the culture of the organisation. Yeah, these people are holding the culture. How much culture work have you done? Brilliant culture work. How much time and effort have you put in to that culture? And you think that you hopefully own the culture? Unfortunately, other people seize hold of it, don't they? And they can take any word you choose to use on the values, can't they? And they can make it rhyme with a rude one, because that's what they did when they were at school. And we can still do it now, can't they? They can take your logo that you've just spent ages putting together, and they can make it look like something else, like a swastika or something like that, can't they? Wow. They're the blockers. So yes, we have to. What happens if we don't do something about them? They start affecting the spectators. They start affecting the spectators. Yes, that's what they do. What else? The players will leave. The players will leave, won't they? They'll either join them, they either jump into the box, or they go, don't they? Now here's a question for you. Because I'm assuming that when you did your labels, you have, and you don't, this is the time when you do don't let anything give on your face, okay? So get, get, your, get your war face on. Where did you put yourself? Well, obviously you put yourself in the player box. <laughs> yeah, keep the face straight, you'll be fine. Nobody will notice, you'll be fine, okay? But you've got to ask yourself, as a player, if nobody does anything about the others, you either join them, the old expression, you can't beat them, join them, what's the point, or you go, I can't handle it any longer. Because the difference is, if you're truly, truly a player, it's because it's personal. It's not because of the organisational values, it's because you buy into those values personally. Does that make sense? Yeah? And actually, we expect that of people. We would like people, but it's hard to say that when we're in an organisation. It's really hard for us to say, we actually want these values, whatever the value is, honesty or trust or integrity, or whatever values we've chosen for the organisation, we want you to exhibit that at home, because we're not allowed, are we? We're not allowed to say you've got to do this at home, but we do actually expect that. We expect it from certain organisations. Is there anybody here from the police force? No? But we would expect it from a policeman, wouldn't we? Or policewoman, a police person? Wouldn't expect them to be all very honest during the day and then having a little bit of a scam going during the night. <laughs> <laughs> Those cynical ones amongst us go, yeah, but it's what we get. <laughs> but it's what we said. I was doing a little speech a little while ago in Uganda. And um, it was the first time I'd done any work in the developing world. I've done work all over the world except the developing world. And I was actually thrown into it at the last minute, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. I'd actually gone over with a group of people, and the pastor from my church was supposed to be speaking. He was actually at a church. And he was supposed to be speaking. All I'd gone was to do was to dig wells, because I thought that was a noble thing to do. I don't want to do any speaking. I want to dig wells. I want to come back with blisters on my hands. That's what I want to do. Say, I have been digging wells. Uh, and, uh, and they already had a well, unfortunately, where I was. Just, no, do you not want another one? I'd dig a well. I could dig a well. Unfortunately, stereotyping there. Uh, so off I went to Uganda and unfortunately my pastor one night was cleaning his teeth with his bottle of water and he put his, his, put his uh, toothbrush under the tap water and continued to 